let's learn about tree diagrams and probability and sample spaces. In this first example, I've got two coins and they can land on either a heads or a tails. We're gonna flip both of those coins. That's gonna give us two different levels to this tree diagram. For the first level, I'm gonna start off with a branching with my two first possible outcomes. So for that first coin, I can land on either heads or tails. So I've taken care of coin number one. I'm gonna follow that with coin number two and pair their outcomes together. So when I match this with coin number two, I can pair a heads on the first with, let's give a level for the second, and that's gonna be a heads or a tails on the second. And then I can go back and pair that tails on the first with either a heads or a tails on the second. This gives me my sample space and I can follow my branches through to figure out what all of my possible outcomes are. I'm just gonna let S be my sample space and I'm gonna put these guys in a set. So if I follow my branches, if I get a heads on the first one, I can follow that with a heads on the second. So there's my first pairing. And then I can do heads on the first followed by tails on the second to get my second pairing. And I can just continue to do this through. Tails followed by heads, that's gonna be tails and then heads. And then finally tails followed by tails gives me my last pairing. And we can see that I've got one, two, three, four. So the number in that sample space is equal to four. Now let's fill in the probabilities on our tree diagram. I wanna start with the probability of getting heads on one flip. I need favorable outcomes out of total. There's one head out of the two possible outcomes. So as I follow this first branch down, I get a one out of two or a 0.5 probability. I can also do the same with the probability of a tail. The probability of a tail, again, one favorable outcome out of the two, which would be a one half for this next branch or a 0.5. Now, if I look at the next branches, I think of those individually. So as I'm looking at getting the second head, this is my second level, and I'm looking at this branch right here, that would be another one out of two possibility. And I can also for that second tails, that's a one out of two. For the second heads, that's a one out of two, squishing this on here. And for my second tails, that's a one out of two. So if I wanted to figure out now the probability of getting tail followed by tails, I can actually do this two different ways. This is the probability of tails and tails, which tells me to multiply those probabilities together. And I'm gonna multiply the probability of the first tail times the probability of the second tail, which was one out of two. Multiplying that fraction straight across, I end up with one out of four, or 0.25, a 25% probability. Now match that with what we've got here in the sample space. So if I were to look at the probability of, let's do um, heads and heads, I could do this by following the probability in my tree diagram, or I can go ahead and count favorable outcomes over total outcomes. So I'm just using FAV for favorable. Well, my favorable outcomes are going to be just this single heads and heads. There is just one of those favorable outcomes, but in my sample space, I have one, two, three, four possible outcomes. So I get that one out of four, 0.25, or again, 25%. Now let's add a third coin. When I add this third coin, I'm again gonna need three different levels because I've got a coin number one, I've got a coin number two, and I'm gonna go ahead and use orange for that coin number three. So I need a first level and a second level and a third level. I'm gonna build this though exactly the way that I had built the last one. I'm gonna spread things out just a little bit more so I make sure I've got enough room. This is my first level. That branch goes to the two possible outcomes on that first coin, and that's gonna be either a heads 
for a tails. Now I'm going to branch off from heads and I'm going to branch off from tails with the two possible outcomes on coin number two. So that's going to be heads or tails. I could also follow the first tails with a heads or a tails. And now I'm ready for coin number three. I've got lots of different combinations that I can follow the heads or tails on coin number three. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in each of these branches and I end up with heads or tails. If I follow the first branch down, heads or tails following the second branch, heads or tails, heads or tails. Now this is one where I really don't want to write the sample space, but I can still come up with the number in the sample space by counting up the ends of my branches. So the number in the sample space, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's no coincidence that I've got three different coins that had two possible outcomes each. Two times two times two is equal to eight. Using the probabilities on my branches is going to be an easier way to compute my probabilities than having to write out my sample space. Well, each time I'm flipping a coin, I have a one half or a 0.5 probability. Let's say that this time I want the probability of getting all three tails. Well, that's going to be the probability of getting tails and tails and tails. So I'm going to use that probability rule where I'm multiplying my probabilities together. Bringing it down over here, I've got three probabilities. The probability of getting that first tail is a 0.5 times, I want the probability of getting that second tail, that's another 0.5, times the probability of getting that third tail, which is another 0.5. 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5 turns out to be 0.125 or 12.5%. I want to get away from doing one where everything has a probability of 0.5, so let's look at the spinner example. I'm going to spin the spinner twice, and I'm going to record if I land on an odd or an even number. And I'm going to go ahead and start with spin number one. So for spin number one, I'm going to land on either an odd number or an even number. I'm going to go ahead and make a level for spin number two. And on spin number two, I'm again going to land on either an odd or an even number. Again, an odd or an even number. So I can see that I've got four in my sample space. And I could even write that sample space out if I wanted. It's not too bad. But what I really want to do is to put my probabilities up here. I need my probabilities of getting an odd or an even on a single spin. So I'm going to start with the probability of getting an odd number. That would be the probability of landing on either a one a three or a five. Well, in a single spin, there are three of those favorable outcomes out of five total outcomes. So I've got a three fifths. If I also do the probability of an even number, so I can finish out my tree diagram, probability of an even would be the probability of landing on either a two or a four. That gives me two favorable outcomes out of the five. Let's put those probabilities up here on our tree diagram, starting with the probability of landing on an odd. That's a three fifths. I'm gonna label these in green. So that's gonna be a three fifths, a three fifths. The other odd happens here and there's a three fifths there. Going back up and labeling the probability of getting an even, that's gonna be a two fifths on this branching, a two fifths here, and then a two fifths here. I can calculate a probability with this information. Let's say that I want to know the probability of landing on an odd first followed by an even number. Well, this is going to be odd and even. So that's going to give me the probability of landing on an odd first. I'm going to multiply these together, which is a three fifths times the probability of landing on an even, which is going to be two fifths. And if I multiply these straight across, I end up with six 20 fifths as our probability. Take a look at this video next. You guys are doing so great. Thanks for watching.